Walter Latham. Comedy. Hey, Walter. I know uh, putting a TV show together is not easy. It's a lot of things that you got to go through. And um, I, I have a curiosity of who support you with this project. The project? Yeah. Well, the, the host. I think everybody I called pretty much said yes. And you know. You, you. Right. <laughs> called Jenna Number Jameson. One, yeah. I called Jenna Jameson. <laughs> I called Carolina. Um, I called Trina. I, I called Trina last. Why you know, Trina? I, you know, I wanted someone from different backgrounds. I didn't want people to just make an assumption. Oh, it's all this type, or it's all that type. So someone from a music background, you know, acting, modeling. So I wanted a full gamut of of, of stars. Um, obviously beautiful, you know, in their own right. The fan base was important to me. I mean, you know, we live in a different society. You know, social media. Yeah, social media. I, I have a, a deal with Paramount, and the first thing they do on any creative call that I have with them is say, well, how many Twitter followers do they have? How many Facebook fans do they have? Oh, wow. And 10 years ago, when I walked into a room, that didn't exist. It was like, well, how many tickets do they sell? I took Tyler Perry to Paramount about seven years ago, and the first thing they wanted to know is, well, how many shows does he sell? How many video videos? VHS tapes. <laughs> no one even has those anymore. How many, you know, does he sell? So they wanted to kind of get an idea of those kind of numbers, which to me are really hard numbers. Because someone has 500,000 followers, to me, don't mean they're going to make me money. Right. You make an assumption, I guess, because of the, the, the social media and the new society we're in, they assume that they can market. Marketing is true. That's, that's true. You'll save money on marketing because they'll reach a lot of people. But that doesn't mean if you market to someone, they're going to come. So you have to have something to sell them. You know, so I think social media is important because I think it saves money, obviously, on marketing. I think you can reach a lot of people quickly, but I don't think you should depend solely on that to make a decision as big as making a movie, you know, so. That's right. Yeah. And uh, what makes, uh, what made Walter laugh? Me? When you were, let's what say, made? when you were a little kid or what, what was I, your favorite I have TV all show? drunk relatives. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Um, so, to me, growing up, the thing I probably come to mind is I grew up in, in dysfunction, and in that dysfunction came some some funny moments. And has it changed as you thought? It, it changed because I don't live in dysfunction anymore. I, I you know, I, I love comedy. I love life. I love, you know, kind of seeing funny things that happen in the world. I don't watch TV. You know, I watch movies. You like me? Yeah, I try to keep I try to keep my own perspective. And what's your favorite funny? Movie? My favorite funny movie ever? Yes, ever. ever. My favorite movie ever is Urban Cowboy. Straight up. Oh, favorite. <laughs> I love that movie. Favorite movie. That's funny. Funny movie? Ah, oh, it's hard to say. I I would say Richard Pryor's Here and Now. Amazing. Here and Now. Now every time I watch it, like wow. I, I laugh. Like I just watched it. I was <laughs> obsessed with So I Married an Axe Murderer. <laughs> I love that movie. It was oh, a good movie, though. Don't cry yourself that, that, to sleep that. on your bed. <laughs> Something about a Scottish accent just makes me laugh. That was a funny movie, though. There's yeah, a lot of funny right. movies, though. I mean, but that that's that's the one I could probably watch every couple weeks and still laugh about. So what do you think is going to be, what do you think this comedy show, mm -hmm. how do you think it's going to change people when it comes to their perception of comedy? I think... I think the presentation of it is gonna first make people, especially comedy fans and comedy lovers like me, if it were me and someone else is doing it, the first thing I would do is inspect it and be like, what What are they doing? What is that? What is that all about? But I think the way we're gonna present it and allow you guys to be your own person and not try to be comedians, because I've seen those tweets. Why are, you, why are you hosting? You're not a comedian. You know, you're not. And I know you're not. And I'm not gonna make you a comedian. I want you to be who you are and you marry that with the comedy in this beautiful setting in Miami. The venue is all Miami. I mean, the venue is beautiful and it looks like Miami and it feels like Miami. So I think when you marry that sexiness with the comedy and the comedy is gonna be funny because all the guys I chose were funny. And it's all guys too, hosted by all women. So which I think the male, exactly, me too. The male comedians are my favorite. Yeah. What do you think is the difference between a male perspective. I think that's the difference between any comedian, you right. know, a, a white comedian and a black comedian, a man and a female. 
the perspectives are different. So if you hear a Monique sex joke, you know, it's nasty and it's from her perspective. So if she talks about- It's almost shocking to hear from a woman, Yeah, right? it is, but it's true. It's like, it's, for us, it's like funny. So Earthquake and Monique. Earthquake tells a joke about anal sex. Monique tells a joke about anal sex. But from the woman's point of view, his point of view is different because he's the one serving it and she's the one like so like it's funny to like see the both you know both perspectives on the same subject matter and especially the subject matter is kind of like you don't even talk about something like that in public but they you know they get out on stage and talk about it so is this something that you thought about doing when you were young is this something that you were like oh i'm gonna get into comedy i wanted to be in show business i think (laughs) at some point i think i realized i wasn't talented and um i know MC Light and I grew up together. And she obviously became a rapper and I used to go to her shows. And one night I was walking backstage and I went into a room and it was like all this money and all these white guys with all these computers. And I walked back to her room and I was like, what What do they do? <laughs> like, what's that? And she said, they're promoters. I was like, I want to do that. And I was 20 years old. Wow. And I started promoting at 20 years old. What make you decide to do comedy and not maybe another show? Like- I did music. I did music before. Uh, I did rap before. And I think they're, uh, it was a headache. It was like not worth, worth it. And I wasn't even making money. So my first comedy show, you know, when you're dealing with rappers, you're dealing with like 30 people coming with one group. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, that's, you know, when I did my first comedy show with D.L. Hughley and Bill Bellamy, it was just them. When they showed up, I was surprised. I'm like, that's it? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's changing. I mean, so comedians can take care of themselves. And they were younger, too, so they didn't have road managers and security. It was just them. And so what sh- is it that you mm-hmm. respect about comedy? <clears throat> I respect, I think it's hard. I think when you're in a band, um, I saw uh, 60 Minutes the other day, and they would, uh, was it Aerosmith? What's that, the, the judge, American Idol judge? Yeah, Aerosmith. Aerosmith. I mean, Steve Tyler sounds horrible, but the music sounded great. So it was a cover-up. You know, it don't really matter. But comedy is you. If you bomb, <laughs> it's you, you bomb. It's exactly. Yeah. You can't cover it up with a solo. You know, it's, it's all you. So I think I respect the art form. And uh, I really respect it. I mean, I'm vocal about it, too. It's scary. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't even imagine getting on stage and hoping people laughed. <laughs> like, that's a lot of pressure. Bernie Mac like, used, have, he used to say that to us sometimes we had dinner. He would always look at the first row. And if he was making that row laugh, then he knew he had everybody else. And they weren't like, la- and I've, I, have, I have tape of him, even when he got big, like when he was popular. And he would always look. And if they weren't looking right, like he would have a problem with that. <laughs> like, I know I'm I'm gonna gonna it up. What's going on here? Did Why you ever you think laughing? about telling jokes yourself? I thought about it. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I get asked a lot, you know, are you funny? Are you funny? Cause you, you know, you're on comedians a lot, make me laugh. Make me laugh. <laughs> you know, yeah, right? I, like, I can't make I'm you laugh. I think I have a witty sense of humor because of that, though. I mean, you got to think 20 years I've been around every comedian, from Chris Tucker to Bernie. And so you pick up stuff. Un, you know, naturally, you pick up stuff. So I think in you that think way. that gets girls? Being funny? Yeah. I think being funny and being rich gets girls. I think being <laughs> corny and being rich gets girls. You're, you're golden, yeah. right? I think being rich, you can work with everything else. Everything else comes into play. So. 